miracle. But once they were able to, to grasp that and really have a full understanding of like, I can trust my team in this regard. If I'm having a bad game, that's okay. I still need to do what's important, right? I still need mm -hmm. to make the plays that I need to. They learn to sacrifice for the greater good. And it's, uh, it's, it's paid out, remain. literally. <laughs> it's pretty good. Big time. <laughs> Big, time. Big money. Yeah. Which no, apparently none of the care. players know. Yeah. Because they just play Dota anyway. Hey, look at that. Oh, Jakiro first, first ban. First ban, Jakiro. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, Jakiro has been uh, quite an on and off hero recently. I've seen some teams like the hero, some teams don't pick the. Like, I totally ignore the hero, but personally, I like the hero. Yeah. It has wave clear. <laughs> wave clear and a very far wave clear, his ultimate. There like, are uh, certain lanes when you're playing a support, you're like, you can't push out that lane, but with Jakiro, you can yeah. because of the range. In fact, it's like one of the most unique things because sometimes you can stop pushes before they even get Dire to your tower, yeah. right? And be able to uh, like keep backdoor protection. I actually like the bans that they're actually do doing here against. It's specifically tailored against uh, SGE spots. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had both really good Earthshaker games. Jakira, they used one game, the other game wasn't banned, but they chose not to use it. But those two heroes were really key in their composition, Ten the catch and the push out. Yeah, we just mentioned the importance of wave clear and uh, yeah, Jakiro, great one for that. Remaining. And yeah, the Elixir, the Earthshaker. For the side of SG, I don't think it comes as too big of a surprise that we see uh, Iowa and Veno banned. Maybe the Veno, the only one out, not targeted uh, GH, of course. Yeah, but they have to be very careful with uh, like so many of the heroes that Liquid can play. Yeah. The Necro, the Brew, like you, you always have to keep, like even the, Hus the occasional Huska, like your draft has to be able to deal with those kind of things. That's why it's really difficult to draft against Liquid. They go for the Nyx, uh, which Ten like very standard remaining. staple pick. Yeah, and I feel like it's the obvious replacement to Earthshaker in a lot of ways. So that catch. he is that, yeah. yeah, like that four position that can Team go for the catch. Liquids. And Turn his added advantage being that he gets a lot of information for you. But um, they gave away the Night Stalker though. Yeah. I, I think Night Stalker is really good against Nyx. And okay, the first two heroes are actually both really good against Nyx. And because you make your team group up, mm -hmm. you push, that's what Nyx does not want to fight against group ups because they don't Nyx doesn't really do anything. Ten seconds remaining. You kinda have to draft a good team fight with Nyx uh, in a lot of situations to make up remaining. for the hero's weakness. And Night Stalker really gui guards against um, split pushing, which is the natural like naturally what you want to do against Chen, right? Because he forces so much grouping up. And I feel like Night Stalker is probably one of the best four positions uh, outside of Earthshaker. I mean, you could argue Chen can do it split push later back. in the game and you have the, the, the ancient creeps and you push what? up one. Oh, yeah. CM is good against, uh, it's be because of the Chen. Isn't Witch Doctor better though? You guys are all so mm. normal about that, why do you pick I, it now? I actually kind of like uh, CM in certain, like if you must have a plan, like when you pick CM, mm -hmm. you're basically trying to build like Ten a tricol wave clear remaining. lineup. That's why you want to abuse the aura. You don't just pick CM because there's a Chen. Five seconds all remaining. about the heroes that are coming, so it's suggesting that they are going to go for like the push up hero, like the Linas or like some dark here, like some. Yeah, we're we're gonna have those spam uh, spam yeah, mid hero uh, and probably what, whatever they use. Yeah, yeah, whatever they use the mana well, like or even a uh, is Puck still with that? Yeah, Puck still in the pool. Yeah. Those kind of heroes are really good with CM. So this is what I'm getting right now with this pick here. I, I do. Uh, I think there's a Ten chance maybe that remaining. they still pick up um, an initiating offlaner. Uh, I know we've seen a lot of wave clear out of them, but uh, one of the things was that like whenever Earthshaker was taken out of the pool in South America, it was like Batrider was a very common pickup. He mm -hmm. uses the Crystal Maiden aura. That's, I think that's a he's, possibility. He's great for Vision as well. He's still okay, but Ten I hate playing Batrider. Nice yeah, me too. <laughs> it's awful, man. Can't they have such see, a vision can't advantage. Can't see anything. They ban out the Clinks, which is pretty good against the Chen. But overall, right now we see two like very like this like very different openings from from the teams. And but I would say that Liquid ha Liquid's early game should be looking much better because of the NS and the Chen compared to the Nyx and CM, which needs more time. So what are the the spam heroes? They they, they ban out one. Mirana could be really good. Yeah, Mirana. Like, pa Darkseer. Dire team I don't know if they run a meta because a meta is like the NA thing. Oh, they go for like even more team fight tight. Um, tight. So against tight. Do you, does this mean that if SG wants to try and avoid team think, fights, or do Timber, they have to build more team fights? can be good for team SG, yeah, but they need to be careful. So they go for the first spamming hero, Necroforce. 
I really like Necrophos against Tidehunter. Uh, it's kind of like similar to the vein of Disruptor in that it's a hero that can lock down Tidehunter and finish him off before he gets off his yeah, ultimate. He's gonna just have to get like a hood. Yeah. And a pipe at some point. Ten seconds remaining. Then the Chen is gonna have the mech. Like Chen is pretty good against Necro because he can stop the Reaper kills Five from far away. Remaining. Yeah, yeah, we saw that power of uh, the Pugna also being able Pugna's still in the pool? Oh no, 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 no got I got banned up. No. I SG. think what I kind of like about Tide here is if what you're saying is going to be the game plan for SG and like having these kind of self-sufficient spamming mm -hmm. heroes, uh, it leaves a lot of room to farm for your three cores on Liquid because the lanes are kind of always pushing out. And Tidehunter is one of those offlaners that Dying I feel like I can never run in pubs, but I feel like it does, it is viable in in pro games because you really need that space to farm on that offlaner. Yeah, I feel like it's it's you can't just be a blink ravage. Tight. Pretty hard to win in pubs I can. <laughs> <laughs> you can attest? Yeah, you can I really attest on that, that, that. <laughs> Me too, dude. I'm glad I'm not the only Ten one. Seconds, so they go for Lifestealer, which is uh, one of the few better solid carries Five against Nyx. Seconds remaining. The, in, uh, the innate BKB that you have, the spell immunity. And they have like a very group up pushing lineup right now for Liquid. The Tide, the Chen. Lifestealer. Now, I've always seen Lifestealer picked as like the safe lane against Nyx offline, right? Like, um, but as a four position, isn't it, as if Nyx is four position, isn't it a little bit better against Lifestealer because you don't have that laning feints nonsense and, and where Lifestealer is so dominant. And the Carapace will own you if you're trying yeah, to... Yeah, exactly. You're trying to do the, the Blink Ravage. Yeah. If you have a Spike Carapace off, Lifestealer is instantly stunned. And you have a stun out of Invis, which is yeah, kind of problematic for It goes for both you. ways like that. But I think the other main important thing why the Lifestealer is uh, good with the lineup is I think they're going to roam a lot with the NS and Chen. Mm -hmm. So your safe laner has to be somewhat self-sufficient and Lifestealer is going to be able to fulfill that role okay. pretty well. Why, um, so in that case, I would ask why Lifestealer over the other self-sufficient heroes that are also good versus Necrophos? Um, Monkey, well, Monkey King, not not good against Necrophos, but like Ursa, for example. Mm -hmm. Like those are two heroes that are also very self-sufficient. What's what's special about Lifestealer? I don't know, I think I feel Lifestealer is more solid, personally. I I, I like the more the, reliable you Yeah, mean? more reliable. Yeah. And okay. also I I pick Ursa if I I want to have like a lineup that can maybe like use the Roche to snow. I, I think it's a lot of preference between the players, what they like to play. And personally, I feel like Lifestealer is more like stable. Like the Chinese, like Chinese would pick Lifestealer, the Chinese teams, because it's very solid. Team yeah. Like back then when they pick it up. I, and I do like uh, Lifestealer now. Now it's a Lifestealer mm. versus Monkey This hero team. is like, I guess he kind of uses the aura now if you go the max primal spring and you just push out lanes. So will you do that? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really good. Uh, even as core of uh, like carry your off lane, I think you don't really need to max your stun. You should max your the jump, yeah. okay. the tree down, Five so you push out the wave. Remaining. It's a great farming tool. Like, Monkey is able to jump from the tree and kill a creep wave and instantly jump back into the tree. So it makes him, he's not like full on Juggernaut Lifestealer where he's got an innate tool that prevents him from being ganked very easily, but it's kind of close to that level. Isn't that, that the same thing that the <laughs> SG this morning basically abused against VG where, where VG had the Monkey King and they knew exactly when he was going to do yeah. exactly that and they catch the they had, every time. Uh, that game they had uh, Jakiro and they had Oshaker. They had yeah. heroes that can actually just stun. They hear the sound I cue. guess that's very difficult We don't have the instant liquid. stuns here on, on Liquid. Yeah. Do you uh, get the silence from Ice seconds. Yeah, but you can't stop him from... Like if yeah, he jumps down I don't he think immediately jumps enough. back, yeah. it's not fast enough. Okay. Five, they six, out, you also have to be in position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Of course. They ban out the Viper so to protect the Lifestealer pick more. I guess you can still go Razor if you really want to <laughs> own the Lifestealer. I've seen a couple of Razors not feeling it right now. It I just mean, doesn't seem to be the same. He does fiber. use the Plasma feel. I mean the Plasma plus the CM Aura well. Mm, yeah. But I'm not sure if that's the right hero for them. Because they don't really have much team fight now except for the Wukong's Command. <laughs> like everything else is not really like, Yay. not comparable to the Tide. I'm not sure what they want here to What's, uh, what's with the TA ban? Are they expecting one of the flashy heroes from Miracle Mid? TA ban. Uh, I really like very focused single target damage uh, against remaining. Monkey King and Necrophos. TA is good against like Lina, those kind of heroes. So maybe they want. Five seconds maybe they remaining. Want Lina uses the aura from CM definitely yeah. and clears waves fast. Team Liquid's turn to pick. In the spirit. Uh, we never said though. Ember's like a both wave matchup. 
but still, uh, it's a hero that uh, uses the like the main thing is like it uses a CM aura. They're gonna have this like tri core setup, so I think so. Monkey King should wait. Monkey King is off lane. Necro off lane. I guess Monkey King. Ten seconds. Can I aggro Tyne lane into? I think it's too dangerous. Against hard, the it's very lane. hard because of yeah. the Yeah, I think you got a tied one. I I would actually point. put Monkey King off lane and Necro yeah. safe lane Ember mid and yeah and just let the Mon Monkey King might not have a very good start initially, but he's gonna be able to catch up with the CM aura and the primal spring. So I think that might be for me. I'm I'll, I'll run it that way, but I'm not sure if SG is gonna do it that way. In you just get it. Yeah. Invoker against Nyx though. Nyx is ah. Uh, I mean, Miracle doesn't care, I guess. Yeah, it's no. not the it's like the best counter you can get from. It's very annoying. Position. But the rest the rest of the cores are not like the best at uh, being able to deal with Invoker, right? Because he he offers so many like harsh disables yeah. for these heroes. So what what are we thinking here? Is this draft enough to to beat Liquid? As as Liquid is the the favorite going into this? I believe the SA Dora man. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> All right, right. Uh, I'm I'm gonna stick with Liquid just because I think it's really difficult to play into Invoker, um, like Tidehunter. They they have this like very clear team fight advantage. Yeah. You mess up a couple mm. times, it's it's gonna cost you a lot. I don't know if SG is good enough to be able Ten to play that remaining. kind of flawless Dota. Sometimes against. you gotta just believe, you know. You just gotta believe. Yeah, winner. we can do it. <laughs> all right. Well, let's. See, I'm not uh, giving them my energy. I'm sorry, winner. <laughs> it's all on you. Let's see if Winter's belief is enough to pull them through. It is over to Odie, Pixel, and Fog for the first game of this Winter's Bracket Finals of Group A. Thank you very much, and absolutely. Liquid versus SG. We've just seen the two drafts come through, and there's a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things to be excited about as well. We've yeah. got this incredible mid matchup, Miracle versus Adriano. It's going to be Miracle Invoker versus Adriano Ember Spirit. That's going to be hype. We've That's got hype. some sort of, sort of out of the meta picks as such. The, the Tidehunter coming through from Liquid. We're looking at something that they, they don't really play that frequently. Three times. They played it two times at TI, and the time before that was eight months ago. So not a lot, a whole lot of play on it, but like they were saying on the panel, there's a lot of team fight coming out for them. But I don't, I'm, I'm kind of liking what SA's, SA's got, what, uh, what the Brazilians got going for them right now. Yeah, they look pretty hot earlier the, today. The last pick, Ember Spirit, there's not really a whole lot of disable on the side of Liquid. It's now it's they have the crippling fear, and then the invoker. Other than that, they have nothing else to stop TPs unless the Chen has some creeps going on. That being said, though. I do like what they've got going. I, I believe in them a bit, but you know, Liquid it definitely is the stronger team, and I think Miracle can go out of control on this Invoker as well because he's gonna get help. That's the big thing. It's it, you know, Invoker versus an Ember. Invoker kind of wins that because Ember is so low armor, but Ember can force the lanes out a lot. But throw a Chen in the mix, Invoker is gonna be fine as long as there's some rotations. I mean, as the panel sort of touched on, there are well, there is a hero that's sort of a, a bit of an issue for the Invoker, the Nyx Assassin. Nyx as well. It can. It can kind of screw an Invoker's game up. I mean, if, if there's any sort of player that's going to be used to playing in these sort of situations and having, you know, five heroes counterpicked against them, it's going to be Miracle yeah. and his Invoker. But how much issue of an issue do you think this game is? It could be for him having this Nyx against. It it could be a big problems. Like if they actually struggle in this laning phase, I feel like they can come out to a very big deficit. And I think that SG might go aggressive. It looked like here when I saw their. Uh, when I'd seen initially, but no, now it looks like, because it's going to be Necro offlane, so I thought they were going to give him some help. Because Monkey King, it's played by Costa, and Costa is their safe laner in comparison to Laposa playing the offlaner. Okay. So. so a bit of a switch up in that sense, straight up. The other cord getting out with the smoke, getting a nice ward down. Yeah. Not to block, but just to watch those sort of movements from Liquid. And also, yeah, just to, to get an idea of the lane, so maybe SG can look to find these favorable matchups. And the nice thing is too is like if they if they help the Monkey King early, that's where it's it's kind of that Ursa matchup for the Tide Hunter. You can really just suffer so much versus Jingu. He gets a couple stacks on you, you just get bursted down. But I think this is where we're gonna see Kuroki play a big factor in this game. Playing around the mid lane, playing around MC's lane like he did that last game. Gank, that one single gank in the top lane can be so crucial because then Tide Hunter out levels the Monkey King, out levels the CM. He doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter so much because he gets more of that damage reduction versus that physical. I'm hyped though. I'm pretty excited to watch. Uh, yeah, there's gonna there's gonna be so much aggression in these lanes. Yeah. As you said, both teams are out to just absolutely just destroy each other's safe laner in this laning stage. I'm excited for the the SG Monkey King. I've I've seen a bunch of this hero played in the safe lane. I've seen a lot of the Chinese teams play it. They go that Battle Fury build. 
in, as the one position, I do like the Battlefield build, so you can push out the lanes, but there's also, you know, there's other builds where you see the Echo Saber, the Diffusal, yeah. some oh, other people I've seen the Master Madness at the bottom. It's not straight up. That's going to be your first blood, ladies and gentlemen, and going Boy. the way of Matumba as well. Patching out Leposa as they try to get into position to contest that bottom rune, but hey, 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 Matumba. In with the money to begin things off, you know, 440 gold in the bank off that bounty in First Blood feels pretty good for this safe lane lifestyle. Yeah, and it's already, we were talking about the Lifestealer versus the Nyx kind of matchup, and they're already putting the Nyx and the Necro bottom to at least contest versus that Lifestealer, but now he's got boots. He's a pretty happy man. Yeah, it already becomes much harder for them to, to really scare the Lifestealer. Sure, they can keep it to move away from a few CS, but the kill potential is going to be a lot lower. And then Sort of dart back and forward. I'm going to be keeping such. my eyes mostly on this mid lane just because I think these two guys. Big names. They're the big names. You know, Adriano for SG, of course, their biggest one until, you know, seemingly those Earthshaker plays are definitely the ones that are standing out a bit more right now. But still, this, this Invoker versus Ember matchup can go. It, it can go either ways, but I think you know, Miracle is more super comfortable on it once he gets like Alacrity or Fort Spirit up. Ember Spirit suffers that he has super low armor, so he can get punished and pushed out of lane quite heavily. You can see already with the uh, movements from SG, they've got the Nyx Assassin heading over to sort of keep tabs on Kuro and, and his Chen, see what's going up. The Olicor in the neighborhood, oh. just have some XP up as well. Juicy. The Dream versus a Chen, and the Nightmare for a Chen, getting, you know, yep. you're doing double tornado and it's getting, you're getting all your shared experience. It's, it's painful. My control though top, we see him, he is having a field day up here. CM, not really one of the best heroes anymore, period. You don't really do any damage and you you only have one frostbite in lane, you have the clarity. It's very tough to actually sustain yourselves there. Versus that Tide who brought so much regen, but now they're gonna be able to get some stacks up with that Orb of Venom finished on the Monkey King and he can put a decent amount of pressure onto the Tide Hunter with that. And you can see Theo Lacor as well down in the uh, jungle of Liquid. They wanted to contest that bounty rune, but GH, he knows. He heads over, make sure that you know that bounty rune is going to be safe for Kuro to get to help him on his way to level two and yeah, get him into that position where he's going to be able to start making those movements and rotations and having an impact on the lanes. Invisibility. Mid lane CS so far, looking pretty even. 10 for 4, Miracle 10. 11 1, Adriano. So, and dead even, in fact. But this, this Invis rune invis. could change things up. See how Miracle can play his way out of this one. Looking to set up, getting close. But Miracle, you already suspect something's kind of on with this aggressive movement from Adriano. Miracle backs up. Not looking to reveal straight away. This is smart from Bardito. So you, Miracle, you can see that he's sort of expecting that play, but he's he doesn't come two. out straight away. CM is level two as well. Might want to build. No, they just go for some harassment. The minus armor yep. started building up on the Ember Spirit. It's oh. it's too much. And top, that's what we were talking about. You can leave that Monkey King alone yeah. if he has a good start. Jingu Master is doing a lot. He won't dive for the kill. The Orb of Venom helping to bring that tight end to very low mind control down to about seven HP in that. He'll back away. Had to use the South to survive there. So a lot of the sustain just got pushed out for him. One of main GH, trying to push the other core away from having a look in on this side pull. Both level two at the moment on these two. Very aggressive supports early on. And bottom lane, Tumba, CS wise, 13 for four. Get up top, a lot of denies being going on as it's a far harder to get position. Bottom lane, looking for the stun. Nice control there from the other core, just to make sure that GH and Matumba can't do any more damage to either himself or the poster. So now the dream happens for SG. The Monkey King is absolutely alone top. You get the 2-0-2 build, and Tidehunter cannot contest anymore versus that double Jingu mastery with the Over Venom. CM has the liberty to jungle, get those levels up for that Frost, uh, for the Arcane Aura for his buddies. Fairly even across the board, though. Yeah, Kuro yet to, to make those movements. I mean, at the moment, GH going rather deep here. The other core is on, on the case. He's going to look to try and steal that rune and he will get it. The stun falling a little bit short from Theo and now GH, he just turns with the void. And Kuro's coming too. Starts to smack into this Nyx. I think the Nyx may actually just not get uh, yeah, killed Kuro, here. Kuro doesn't even bother coming up. He kind of walks in the direction and said, all right, you've got this one on your own, GH. And he certainly has, picking up the solo kill and stealing the bounty rune. That is that is certainly a way to sort of shift the, the difference between these two. Mid lane, Mid here's lane. the rotation. Kuro coming in with a golem. He's looking for the control. Oh, Slide of Fist comes out. There's the cold snap. Nice little dodge to avoid the centaur, but it may not matter. And indeed it doesn't. GH is coming as well. It's a party in the mid lane for Liquid as they clean up two. Oh, they're the not done either. He's in trouble as well. Look at this Kuro troll from Kuro on his 10. The creep's going crazy. Oh my goodness. Miracle gets the double kill. And that movement, that build up as well from Kuro and GH. 
the whole four minutes, Kuro focusing on that, the leveling and the farming and getting the right creep from the jungle, and then you have that much of an impact in the middle lane. He even tried to skill slight, try to dodge the spells out there, but there was so patience. Many, yeah, there was just so much stuff being thrown at him as well. I mean, yeah. Anyway, so we certainly talked about the lack of you know stuns and lockdown for the draft that the Liquid have. Of course, Kuro quick to remind us that once he has the right creeps under his control, they have all the lockdown in the world. I like how Miracle went for the 2-1-3 build as well, so he made sure he has the, the alacrity, he has that extra right click, that damage that he needed. Oh, man, and here we go again, again. He's going for it. Return of the Zoo part two, he's in trouble. He will dodge out the Centaur stun, but it doesn't matter. They've got so much damage with GH there throwing down multiple voids. It's another kill in that mid lane. This first night time is an issue. As soon as, this is one of the heroes, that, like uh, not only the Night Stalker, but these strength uh, support heroes versus Nyx Assassin, you can run them down and render them pretty useless inside that laning phase. And this first night, GH is really doing that. Now level four already, continuing to make the moves. Samba salved up as well. Echo is lane, though, really yeah. deep. Got a TP though, so they've got to save the void. And GH is saving the void. He's a smart man. This guy is a TI winner. Yep. He knows what he's doing. He's under attack. Holds those spells, perfectly played. And again, 7-0. Only one lane now, really going perfect for them. It's that top lane, of course, for the monkey. But Ember Spirit's definitely suffering. CM can't really help too much versus Night Soccer. Look oh, at this. He's in GH trouble. is just going in. He really is. There are going to be TP rotations. The posts are coming through. They'll turn towards GH. The science is going to wear off. But you know, gets the frostbite. But no, he's down. GH denying us of the 7 1 Brazil dream as it stands 8 0, liquid leading. He is. He is going. Do they have the mana burn skill? They do. Is it going to be enough damage? They're trying to get as many right clicks as possible. Monkey King TPing in. Another TP from CM. Oh, the spooky skull. Oh, my goodness. Look at this speed. <laughs> he oh just my runs. God. My control with the well played yeah. as well. So much space coming out from GH. Look the at that. pressure is unbelievable. How long can he keep this skull alive? Oh, no. Uh oh, my control top, though. Trading some hits. Yeah, that because the boundless strike and tide. Falling low. We'll be fine. Yeah, he's just got a new pace, gonna have to give Oh finally. He consumes the skull between his buttocks. 4k gold lead at the moment, seven minutes in. Yeah, Miracle is already a problem getting this much getting this much out of the laning phase. ideally at versus the invokers, you want the ganks to come onto him. But them roaming onto Miracle, it's a very liquid esque move. That's what they like to do. Give Miracle that great start. And he's an invoker starting out like this. Oh my you're giving Miracle oh, Invoker oh, a good start. That is that is the fear of many a professional Dota player. Oh, yeah. Kuro as well this game already having an immense impact. Level 5, Arcane Boots finished up. Everybody farming on the side of Liquid now. Look at this aggression. A miracle. Actually going to out to the high ground with Simba. Goes for a, a quick bite. He's a back up to full health. GH on the watch for CMO. Oh, Holding on for the Jukes there, they're, they're hunting. He's got to get caught Oh, here. he's in so much trouble. Bardino's been found out. He does have the back of a Thea Lacour, but the Soul Strike goes through. It's enough. On point from Miracle. Can they find the return kill? Adriano moving forward. Instantly silenced though by GH to try and hold back the potential of the Searing Chains. Tornado as well. Miracle starting to tie around with him. Foul with the Void. Oh, he's falling low, but Costa Beal comes in with the rotation. Boundless Strike down. They do lose Adriano, but they get the kill on Miracle. They're looking for more. GH. Still may be a little too speedy. He's going to have phase boost back up in a second. They'll get the Jingu Mastery built up. Can they chase this? GH looking for the Jukes. Tower starting to bite into the other core, but he'll find the stun. Set up for Costa Beal to pick up the double kill. Big rotation there from the Monkey King as they get two for him, and they do put an end to Miracle's reign on that Invoker. Yeah, very nice rotation. I, you see how uh, Miracle prioritizes on the Tornado early on to remove that Flame Guard so the damage doesn't build up. It's a really important thing to do as invokers when you're playing versus that matchup of ember spirit but yeah again this is daytime and night stalker comes in and gets a gets a kill but the mega kill streak goes towards the monkey king as you're mentioning that's, that's perfect for us have they gone any way top lane ravage into sun strike on adriana meaning there's no chance for him to run it away oh my goodness liquid seeing an opportunity and not holding back and look at kuro here he has manta styled his creeps, he's got triple purple blasts at the ready. Yep, sends one home to full heal, and those those blasts would have connected top as well if it wasn't a, a finish off from the Sunstrike, but getting involved with Sunstrikes when you have no stuns on your team this early on, absolutely the dream. Already a 5k lead, sub 10 minutes for Liquid. These supports on the side of Liquid are just making 
so much space. Well, in comparison, this is why we've seen the Crystal Maiden kind of fall off a lot. You see she's 0-3 already, not really having too much of an impact on the game, just kind of giving that aura. Other than that, she's she's just quite weak. Down bottom, SG. She's trying to use the strength that they have, grouping up with this Monkey King, who is still in a great, in a great place across the base. 5k net worth, second highest on the board. And with a with the tower taken down, he's going to be pretty much on par with that a miracle. And yeah. uh, does have a, you know, a decently considering the kills uh, in comparison to Matumba Man's life stealer. The, the one good thing too is, you know, they're playing around their strengths. You know, they know the Necro and the Monkey King are the strongest, so they're going to that lane. And we see Adriano, the Crystal Maiden was at least stacking for him. So he did have a triple stack at one of the medium camps, and it was pretty fortunate camps for him. And see him already level eight, starting to catch back up already. On top. SG wanting to set up potentially cost to be with the eyes on the Tumor Man. I've got the TP in as well from the poster. Has got, of course, that Reaper Scythe at the ready. Hard kills to go for, obviously, both. The Tumor Man having that rage, mind control being as tanky as he is on the on the Tide Hunter. Kuro has four Seder creeps. Yeah, one of them got sent home, but he has three now up the top. He's got four. Yeah, he has four. He's one at base. They have Darkness up as well. Oh, and he's going to pop it probably in the next. 10 seconds or so, just so we can have that nighttime popping right afterwards. Oh, so there we go. Go. Are you ready for the purple? I'm ready for the purples. Where is it gonna the go? The blasts are gonna come out soon. They absolutely are. They won't even need it for this here, and they'll throw it out anyway. Kuro bringing down Bardino. They don't have reveal though. The Nyx Assassin is six. They throw the Monkey King off. They're not gonna look for mind control. He is the biggest of the tank. They need to get the kill. They can't. The heal's too much. Mind control's gonna be saved. Turns around with the gush. Gets himself out of the Wukong's command. He's gonna be sent home as well. Can they finish him off in time? Well, with the remnants, they will. They do bring Adriano in just in time. Jumps forward with the remnants. We'll be able to clean some of these creeps up as well. As SG do manage to come out on top of that altercation. Good reactions there from them. I like that they brought all five there. That's like very important. They know that the Ravage is going to be up very so soon. They saw Darkness popped. It was, you know, it was the opportune moment for them to bring everybody. But that Chen heal by Kuro, that 250 heal, just enough to put my control high enough not to get bursted. Eyeing up a potential more hit. Cost a bill. Yeah, looking towards Matumba. This is what's going to happen though for a, a bit of time, at least for Liquid. They have to play that kind of 4v5 until. Invoker feels like he can get involved where you want that Aghanims. He's actually looking to try to set up for the Nyx Assassin bottom on the Invoker, but this is a very tough kill. He's trying to do the outplay with the full Destiny Blast combo. Oh, and again, look at this. This usage of Ravages from Mind Control just straight up setting up for the kill. The Sunstrike won't connect, but it doesn't matter. GH and Mind Control have enough damage to break down Adriano, and now they're closing in for more. Battle Strike comes out from Costa Bill, trying to hold them back, but it doesn't matter. They lose Liposa on the Necro. They will manage to get the return kill onto GH, but Matuma Man is in and out of the creeps. He's got the stick charges, will start to back up. So SG do at least find one kill, but again, they're losing two cores off the back of that trade. And we said, you know, we haven't seen a lot of the tide enter from Liquid, but I love how Mind Control is playing it. No hesitation, using this Ravage as a setup for the Sunstrike. Even when it miss, it's getting the kill done every time, just that no holding back from Mind Control. There's a reason why he is so renowned now. This guy knows exactly how to play his matchups, how to play his heroes. Barely, didn't even die, right, in the top lane at all? Yeah, didn't even die top versus that Monkey King lane, which we've seen time and time again people struggle versus. And now, you know, they're making all the space in the world. Miracle, 900 gold away from the Agonims, and that's when he can get involved in. It's looking pretty damn scary, 15 to four already. Pretty big detriments. 6k gold lead and a 5k experience lead for Liquid at this moment in time. Absolutely, as you say, just an incredibly quick timing on this Aghanim's forecast for all Miracle. Just like the panel said too, Tidehunter can suffer a bit versus the Necro, but the way to counter that is you go for the hood really early. You go into that pipe build so you can't get bursted through it, and that's exactly what he's doing. Has the hood finished up already. Theo giving a lot of information now, watching Mind Control ping him out. Looks like they kind of want to go for something here, but there's many more in the area. Matsu's there, so, so is GH. Scary, yeah. I mean, if anything, this is just giving the information for Laposa to to try and get the heck out of there, but I don't know if he can. GH and Matumba closing in upon him. He's got the Ghost Shroud, but they block him in, allowing the Sun Strike to connect, and Laposa is gone. Necro down again, 16 to 4. All right, GH is out of control now too. Medallion already finished up. Top four net worth, Night Stalker. 
Ember Speed is ahead of the ne he's at ahead of both of the Ember and the Necro from the opposing team. And we look at the wards coming out from Liquid already. They're trying to keep that advantage going. They want to be able to see whenever the rotations are coming out so that they can always have the outnumber. And that's what's going on every single time now what in bottom lane. Play around court for Costa Bill. We'll throw down the boundless strike. Has Bardino, you know, but even the two of them, they do not want to mess with that invoker. And they'll give him a tickle and back off. Yeah, he's too tanky already with that 1300 HP. And up top, Liquid. Looking for the tier two. SG, they do want to respond though, bringing the full five man up here. They want to try and take some sort of a fight by the looks of it, but look at this aggression from Liquid. Just sending mind control forward on the front lines. Adriana coming in with the side. Gets he's got chain. As you say, at this stage, SG heavily, in, 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 almost fully reliant on the magic damage. There's no way that they can bring down mind control on the tide. Yeah, Hood and Hand of God, it's it's too much sustain at the moment for them to deal with. And they have a bit of a greedy build coming out. You know, the Monkey King wants the Battle Fury. It's still about 400 gold away, so his damage isn't really there. He's not online. And the other heroes on the team as well. Everybody's kind of lacking those items. And Ember Spirit, super behind. Not even bots finished up. Not going for that Veil build oh, or anything like that. He's just straight in on the back lines. Hunts down the Necro, finds the silence. But Tuma Man closes himself in with the Centaur. They get the Ghost Trout out in time on the poster, but he is surrounded. They're looking for the Wukos command, but no, Costa Bill holds off. He says, we cannot take this fight. They just have to accept that the Necro is gone. They'll have to let this tier two drop. Miracle hunting with the Tornado. Through the trees, won't quite find him again. GH as well, sweeping the tree line, looking for that Monkey King. Who will get it back safely to base. They'll have this Necro up, fortunately for them, with the low levels. They're not Just done. 10 seconds. At all. They have everything ready to be expended. They have my Control, they have Ravage, they have Chen Hand of God. They're looking to keep that pressure going. Yeah, no holding back from Liquid here. And understandably so, we're only 16 minutes in. They have this 8k gold lead, and the heroes to absolutely capitalize on that as well. What can SG do? They'll jump forward with the Primal Spring, but immediately the Rage comes out. Ravage as well. The Monkey King's down. And this game, this game looking right? like it may it just be over. Is there anything they can do? They find the ult, but it's not enough initially. They do get the kill with the Remnants. There's been a buyback from Costa Beal. They're going to look for an intense hold here. They get the chains onto Miracle. Sunstrike down onto Adriana, but he moves out the way. Bardo going for the ult, bringing Miracle and Mind Control down low. Mind Control will drop. They've lost two on Liquid. They do find the route onto the Night Stalker. And SG showing us at a point where many would have said maybe it's all over. They show that it certainly is, and they can still offer a fight. Punishing Liquid there. Can they catch Kuro? That's the question. He's smoked up. Did hunt for him in the tree line, but it looks like Kuro will be able to get himself safely back to base. It's 17 minutes in though, and they, that's a forced buyback from the Monkey King. The tier three did still go down, and it was pretty much like, it was the rage wore off, and they just full jumped Matu with triple remnant. Just enough damage to be able to bring him down. And they're looking to keep that aggression going. It is daytime for another two minutes or so. They have to take advantage of any of these opportunities at the moment from this detriment. Any kill is so is I mean, super big for them right now. Mind Control's deep. He is tanky, but he's all alone up on that top lane. It's four heroes. They are surrounding him. He's a big kill as well. Mind Control's got any chance of getting out of this one. He should be dead here. I believe he is. Mind Control, he'll make them work for it. But he's ticking down the hard stuff aura. Certainly working through him. That is going to be another oh. for SG off the back of that. Did you, did you see what Kuroki just picked up? Oh, you saw it, didn't you? I did not see it. Oh, it's a Dagon. Oh, it's a dagging chip we've got. All right, Kuro. He is he's in. He's ready to zap some fools. Mo the, one of the big ways to hurt Monkey King is you're, you have no magic immunity and no magic resistances or anything. You want to be able to burst him with magic. And same thing with the Necro. Necro pops Ghost Shard. You've got go. Dagon now. Let's see who he can zap. He's going to be going on here. Sunstrike laid down. Oh, the poster gets forced forward, gets the scythe. That's what he has to say about that Dagon. Costa Beal being worked upon by Matumbu. now got the Desolator. Can he get himself out of this? He's running away on the Monkey King. Does have the heal flying through. Should be fine. But I tell you, isn't fine. GH, GH taken down. Double kill for the poster. And now Matumbu man, he's trying trying to fight back, but there's four heroes here. The Ghost Shrek is the poster safe, and Matumba, he can't find it on his own. Now the TP comes in. They've lost the tower. Mind Control on the front lines. Chains holding back Matumba. Here with comes the Miracle. Tornado. Looks like SG may just leave the poster dry. He's trying to get himself out with the four star, but the open wounds come in. They'll be able to bring down the Necro. Everyone else on SG getting themselves away, and believe it or not, they are slowly but surely reducing that lead that Liquid have in terms of net worth. With these plays, 
yeah. quite, quite, you know, the ad absolutely admirable hold from SG, considering the situation that Liquid managed to force them into. It's, I mean, they have to take advantage of any of those type of daytime moments. And they did very well with that, that one there. Just the, uh, the four staff coming in from the post of being able to pierce the back lines. I think they got the last hit on the tower too. Yeah, they had got the to top tower as well during that, but now Liquid goes into that Roche. Nyx almost has the Blink Dagger, so they will have that better form of initiation. Recently, and then at least in the last series that SG was playing, they had those clear-cut initiators with that Earthshaker. Now, at least with the Blink coming out soon, it'll be help a lot. And Ember Spirit finishing up a Yule Scepter, so more way, a way to actually remove that silence that's been so punishing toward him. And Battle Fury is finished up on the Monkey King, so they are, they are starting to acquire a few things, but Liquid looking very strong here anyway. With that Deso, with that Aghanim finished up on the Invoker, they're looking to put more pressure on during this nighttime. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Look for the safe objectives, Liquid Dyer's after Rush. Down the shrines. GH wanted to go for something, some kind of play here, but multiple more heroes show up, unable to find the opportunity. But now it's, since we said that tier three was down, Liquid, no hesitation. They're going for shrines. Take it Dyer's easy. Get the safe ones. Mid lane TP's Radiant's coming through, Matuba. Front lines of all of this. And Liquid once again creeping up. Got good creep to do it as well. Ready to try and break the high ground. Adriano, cold snap. Can SG hold this? They've got the full team back for the defense. The other jumping forward doesn't find the stun opportunity. Tornado and EMP are going to be off the off the mark. They use the EMP into this by Carapace to hold Miracle in place, bringing him down to half health. Chains, Root, Cardino has fallen. And they quickly do have Ravage available. Still a very scary fight for SG. There's the jump in. Stun only onto my control rage. Comes out from a tumba. This is the way they need to take this fight. Just throw spells from a distance. Constantly with the chains, with the boundless strike. And then the next stun. They can actually do a decent amount of damage. There's no clear initiator on the side of Liquid. They just need SG to overcommit in order to, for MC to get that big ravage off. Radiant's SG being very careful. They don't give that opportunity to mind control. Yeah. Liquid's seeming to start to notice that they can't really go for this top, but Chain Stun's coming oh, out. I mean, look at that, and then with the triple remnants, he's gonna bring the line! He dodges out of the Ravage as well, but the other two are left to within it. The other core's down. Four star from the Necro, gives him up to the high ground, so strike, oh, he's gonna be dodged as well. The person gets out, but he goes back in with the Reaper Scythe, it's not quite enough though. Kuro will survive. Only the other core going down at the moment, Adriano walking back into the midst of them all. Miracle heading forward, drops down the path. They have got the ult here from Bardo. Cancelled here, and in fact, CM will pay with a life. The post is trying to get himself away from a tumba. Death in glass on Tejuana, but Costa Beal comes in with the back. Rukos command down. Miracle falling low. They will be able to take the Aegis out of his hands. Adriana gets himself out of range of the life stealer, keeping himself alive on the Ember Spirit. Tornado is going to be duked out by Costa Beal. The, the melee right still alive. But Tumba turning back towards the post. He doesn't oh have the ghost God. trap back up. That is the Necro down. Sunstrike coming through, boundless strike thrown down onto Matumba, but there's the silence. Adriano in trouble. He's been surrounded, has been taken down, doesn't have buyback on the Ember Spirit available. So Liquid will clean up, get Matumba the double kill, take the top set of racks. The damage from the medallion plus the uh, desolator, that Necro gets put at negative seven armor, gets chunked down 350 to 400 damage per hit from the Lifestealer. Just easily eaten alive. Same thing with Ember. Both these heroes, that's what they suffer from. The Necro and the Ember Spirit. Sure, you have some magic coming from using immunity kind of coming from the Ember Spirit, and you have, of course, Ghost Shroud for Necro, but if you get hit by that medallion, that Deso, you're at negative portion. You're taking such an amplified amount of damage. The question is, can Theo the Core do something big here? They have the Monkey King in the neighborhood, Matuma Man going for the purchase of the secret shop. Can they can they try for this? Doesn't have Boundless Strike up yet. They need the Chain Stun into a Necro ulti. It's, it's gonna be hard. I mean, Matumba, he does have GH. Oh, GH! Oh, he finds him in the tree line and cuts down the tree straight away with the Sun Strike. That is a dead Monkey King. He is gone. And uh, they're trying to move in for more. SG is sending everyone in to try and hold this. They do get the GH kill. But losing the Monkey King just like that, and maybe the Posse as well. They'll try and hold back with the Yules. Ghost Shroud, the Posse forcing himself down to the low ground. But you see that in damage so much per trouble. Hit. Yeah, Miracle just punching into the poster once this armor reduction comes through onto him from the Deso, as you said. And this man, I don't think he's getting away. Sunstrike not going to be on point, but the control from the Deafening Blast will be SG losing three once again. The vision coming out from that flight from Night Stalker, able to find the Monkey King, isolate him. 
Yeah, 13,000 gold lead now. 10,000 experience lead for Liquid. And they're just, they're not giving SG any space. So we saw the Monkey King go for the Battle Fury build, as we mentioned a couple times. That build, you have to be able to force, you have to be able to push lanes out, you have to be able to get online. Your next item is the big damage one, and then your third item is that BKB, which lets you survive the fights. But they're not allowing this to happen. Even when it's daytime, even when Ravage is on cooldown, they were continuing to try to run at them. Now Ravage is up, Darkness is up as well. They're ready to take the last few outer towers and solidify their lead. SG. Outside of the base, eyeing up their tier two. Maybe testing the situation here, Lacour, trying to get the info, seeing if there's any potential of them being able to look for a fight around this position. Is under attack. But it's so hard with the deficit that they are at. Can they really attempt to tackle Liquid that head on us? You know, let alone outside the base. It's now the oh, has scan. Blink dagger. I don't know. They're scanning out. Mind control comes through with the dust. He knows that they're in the neighborhood. Quickly though, SG blink away. As soon as that dust is out into the Nyx Assassin, they know that they cannot stay there. The vision game too strong for Liquid oh, with the Nice Talker. Oh, he's been left behind. Bardino just picked apart by Miracle as he doesn't get himself back up to the high ground quick enough. GH, he knows where to go straight away. Costa Bill jumps down. Gets himself away from the big bad. Nice Stalker. My control patiently awaiting for that Blink Ravage. The Infest comes out. He's ready to go in. After this tower dies, Catapult, of course, with Alacrity. Just killing that tower. Oh, and there it is. They just got Fredriano. They want a quick kill and they get it. That's an Ember down for 50 seconds. Wukong's command laid out, but he's pushed out by the Deafening Blast. The ult ends. He's been disarmed. Kuro still with his controls. The Golem's throwing the rocks out at the Monkey King. Gush slowing him down. They can't keep this Monkey King alive. He's down, and the post is being surrounded. Matuma still has the rage at the ready. Starts to rip into Laposa. He forces away. The Olacor's going to be the new target. Double kill for Matumba. They can't even get the Reaper Scythe out because the silence is there in time. SG with four out. Make that five. Liquid finding the team wipe. GG is called. And Liquid here in this game one. At no point at all was this team behind. They were winning from minute one. Very few mistakes coming out for them. GH win. Absolute, absolute beast mode this game. I think I looked at the at the kill score, it was 16 kills. He was 7, 2, and 7, making moves everywhere on the map. Even during daytime, he was finding opportunities to get those kills, those ganks on mid lane. We've seen this liquid before. We've seen what they like to do. Helping Miracle, exactly what they did again. Unbelievable.